Welcome to our Sakata Vegetable Production Series. Today we are talking seedlings, specifically on squashes. Why do you need to use seedlings versus seed? And um, is there any uh, um, circumstances which you can actually use seed and so forth? And what are the things that you need to look out for? Lolo, how are you doing? Good in yourself. No, good, good. Right, first of all, I want to know why should I use seedlings on um, squashes? Okay, um, so the advantage of using seedlings, number one, is that you get a uniform stand. Yeah. Uh, whereas sometimes when you plant directly, you know, different workers, one might plant a bit deeper or shallower and they come out at a different time so you don't have a uniform stand. That's and, but, but why is that important? Let's just stand with that for a, for a moment. If I've got a seedling that emerges and I've got one that emerges two days later, what happens to the one that emerges two days later? So that means you're going to harvest later. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that means ununiform harvesting as well. Um, another thing that could happen is if they go too deep, it will rot in the soil. If they go too shallow, it might dry it out there. And, so. and then it like, uh, I don't know what it's called in English, but then it sticks, non stuck guy. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the seed, the seed dies at the end uh -huh, of the day. Uh -huh, yes. Um, so then uh, transplanting basically seedlings, um, that, that solves the, a lot of those issues for me, am I correct? Yes, uh, no, definitely. Another one being that if you've got rodent problems, if you've got rats on your farm yeah. and you plant directly, usually the rats would come and eat your seed. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so when you do seedlings... So rats and mice and those types yeah. of things, then they come and eat the seed, where the seedlings, you don't have that problem. You don't have that problem. Okay, so when can I basically um, start planting the seedlings? Year round, any time? Uh, no, that depends <laughs> on where you are. <laughs> um, the general rule is that um, any time when it's frost-free, yeah. Um, so usually in the northern parts of the country, like your Venda, Musina, Giani, and the eastern parts, your Hazy View, Hood Sprite, in those areas, uh, they can do it into the winter. Yes. Uh, whereas the rest of the country, we do it specifically in summer. So we'd either sow in September up until around January. Uh, we, we basically do that, and because the frost is the biggest problem that we've got. The frost that. is the biggest problem for the squash. And um, what are the things then when I'm transplanting seedlings that I specifically need to look out for? Okay, the first thing, you, when you transplant it, your soil needs to be wet. Yeah. Um, the seedlings in the tray, you need to wet those first at least. Yeah. And then thirdly... Why, why do I do that? Um, so you don't want it to stress too much. You don't yes. want it to get that... So uh, it's all about stress. It's all about stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to prevent that stress. When it comes into a new environment, you don't want it now to experience uh, you know, a dry um, um, patch because that's going to give it stress and that's going to affect your, your, your quality of your seedling. And also I would think in terms of... Uh, um, do I want to handle the seedlings as little as possible as well? Yes. So I don't want to be put to picking up, putting down, picking up, putting put down. Take them to where they need to be and then work from there. Work from there, definitely. Um, and then when I'm putting them into the soil, is there a specific way to do it? Do I need to make a hole in a specific way or how does that work? Uh, yes, yeah, so we make a hole, preferably with a pointed um, stick or pole. Yeah. Uh, you don't want one that's uh, rounded at the bottom because it's going to compact your soil. Uh, so you want okay. to point it so that it loosens up your soil. So it's like, need this like a sharp point uh -huh. almost. Like make, make like a triangle type thing yes. into the soil. Okay? Into the soil like that. And then when you put your ceiling in your soil, you need to make sure that the soil is in direct contact with the seedling. You don't want any air spaces in there. What does the air do? So if there's air spaces there now, it doesn't get access to the water in the soil. Or if, yeah. if the water goes in there, it's just going to be sitting in the water and it's going to drown. Okay, uh -huh. I, I hear you. Uh -huh. um, and um, at what uh, stage or what, what is the advantages from taking like a seed and uh, versus a seedling? Um, what are the major advantages between the two? Um, so the one major advantage that I've seen, which um, translates into, you know, making money, is that what we spoke about the temperatures when you're going to sow, right? If you take your seeds to a nursery during, for instance, August, just after July, yep. you can take yours to the a nursery and then they can make seedlings for you. So at the time it arrives in September, you're putting in seedlings rather than somebody who's going to put in seeds. Now you are four weeks ahead of them meaning you get into the market earlier. Time to market. Time to market. And uh, the, the earlier you get in, usually rule of thumb is the better prices you get. That's the rule Because if of you thumb. enter later, then um, everybody else is in the market, then you get lower prices. That's correct. Okay, so I've got that correct. Um, 
Okay, so then just one other thing in terms of the different varieties. Um, is there different stages at which I need to transplant them, um, the different varieties of squash? Um, so the general rule of thumb is that we start transplanting from the first true leaf. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, what is a true leaf? So that, that's what I was about to explain. <laughs> <laughs> um, these these ones here, these are your cotyledons. This yes. is not a true leaf. Yeah. So this one here, this is your first true leaf. Ah, so that's the first true leaf. Aha, uh -huh, this is the first true leaf. And usually we'll start transplanting them from then. But usually they start getting to that point three to four weeks. Um, they're, they're there and then you can and transplant and them. Then you transplant and that's, yeah. So in terms of uh, the different varieties, what are the plant populations that we're looking at that's optimal? Um, okay, so our, for our zucchini squash, uh, other people call it baby marrow. Yeah. Uh, we do 16,000 to 20,000 seeds per hectare. Yes. Uh, for our butternuts, we do anything between 12,000 to 15,000 seeds per hectare. Our Hubbard squash, we do 5,000 to 6,000 per hectare. Um, and then for the gem squash, we do anything between 16,000 to 20,000. So why is the plant population so important to have the optimal plant population? So, you know, if things are too close to one another, they crowd one another, they uh, make smaller leaves, they're going to make smaller fruits. The quality of the fruit is not so going to be as good. So the competition between the plants is a problem. It, it becomes a big problem. So you don't want them too close to one another. And, and also you don't want them too far apart because you're going to be wasting space on your farm. And then and then also they only make X amount of fruits per plant. Yeah. Am, I, am I correct? That's correct. Okay, so if you were to, to sum up um, that one most important thing, why would I use, um, use seedlings on, on squash? What would that be? Um, just like we mentioned earlier is um, getting seedlings so that you can get into the market earlier because that translates into money in your pocket. Awesome. Oh. Lolo, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that is why you need to seriously consider using seedlings on squash instead of seed. There is certain instances where you can use seed, but at the end of the day, um, the upside of using seedlings is just so much more. If you've got any questions, um, just comment below or we'll put a link on top or below, depending on where you're watching this. Um, and then you can get in contact with Sakata. Make sure to watch all our other vegetable seed production videos um, or uh, vegetable production videos from Sakata. There's a whole lot more and um, we're aiming to get you to the perfect harvest. Till next time. Cheers.